Hey guys, it's Thunder Splash, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about how to create a dash system in Unreal Engine 5. But first, a special shout out goes to Ginger Franny, Taki Taco, and Ill Blur Matic. I appreciate you guys' support. You guys are the new subscribers the last couple days, so thank you once again. And with that being said, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that notification bell as well so you guys can be updated with the latest and greatest videos every week when I post new videos. All right, let's get into it. All right, so first we're going to go to Unreal Engine Marketplace and we're going to look up Dash Effects. After that, I'm going to import into my project. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit File, then Project Settings, go to Input, and look for Action Mappings. I'm going to rename this to Dash, click the keyboard and I'm gonna choose the letter Q. Then I'm gonna close it. After that, I'm gonna open up third person character blueprint. I'm gonna right click, type in input dash. Then I'm gonna go to components, add, look for a Niagara particle system. Make sure it's connected to the capsule and drag it onto my event graph. After that, we'll right click and look for activate. Then we'll connect input press to activate. After that, we're gonna get the character movement. Right click, look for set max walk speed. And then we're gonna connect it to activate. We're gonna change the walk speed to 1200. Right click, look for set max acceleration. And we're gonna connect that to max walk speed. We'll change the acceleration to 10,000. Right click. Look for a timeline. We're gonna break this part and we're gonna connect it to play from start. Open it up. Now we're gonna add a flow track. Change the length to one second. Add a keyframe. Make the time zero and make the value zero. After that, we're gonna add another key. And we're gonna change the time to 0.25 and the value to one. After that, we'll select auto for both. Compile. Go back to the event graph, grab the character movement, and next we're gonna grab the capsule movement. Now we're gonna right click on character movement and look for a set max walk speed. We're gonna change this back to 600. And then we're gonna click on character movement and look for a set max acceleration. Going to change this one back to 2048. Connect the max walk speed to the max acceleration. And now we're going to right click on capsule component and look for get forward vector. Then we're going to right click on the return value and look for add movement input. And then we're going to connect update to add movement input. and connect finished to max walk speed. 
All right, so now we're just gonna check to make sure this looks correct. Compile. Then we're going to go to viewport. Next, we'll click on Niagara. And then we're going to select the particle system. Now, the particle system is going to be ahead of us right now, so we're going to move it back a little bit. And we're going to adjust it so it looks like it's the one behind the player. After that, we're gonna click auto, and we're gonna deselect auto activate. This is gonna ensure that the particle system only activates when we press Q. Compile, go back to third person map, and hit play. All right, and there you go. Anytime we press the Q button, the character dashes forward. Now, if you want to make this super fancy, all you got to do is just add an animation every time you press Q, and your character will do that animation while dashing forward. But as you can see, when the character dashes, the player accelerates. And here's a good example. If we don't press the letter Q and the character jumps, they won't be able to make the jump. But if we press Q, then the character can dash forward and make the jump. All right, so if you didn't have the Niagara um, particle system, you can also do the spawn emitter at location. And it does the exact same thing. And this is the blueprint for it. The only differences would be is you need to have a spawn emitter at location, get world location, and then make sure the mesh is referenced. And then you can change the emitter to whatever you want. All right, so now let's see the difference with the spawn emitter. All right, now press Q, and there you go. Character can make the jump, and it's got a really cool lightning effect to go with it. And every time you keep pressing the Q button, the character continues to dash. All right. And there you go. Hey guys, if you like these type of videos, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this video, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Later.